I am a doctor. And one evening during a shift at the hospital's emergency department, I received Linda, a 20-year-old student. She was bleeding heavily after an accidental pregnancy had led her onto a back street abortion. In a voice that showed her fear, she whispered to me, Doctor, my friends told me unprotected sex could cure my painful menstrual cramps. Just a few hours later, despite our best efforts, Linda was dead. A piece of misinformation, a rumor, cost this vibrant young girl her life. At that moment, I realized health equity was only possible when people have the information they need to make good and right health decisions for themselves. And this misinformation challenge grows as access to social media grows. I have even known religious leaders with millions of followers across West Africa perpetuate rumors among their followers. For example, that, that COVID-19 is spread by the 4G network. So I founded M. T. Jam Health, a health communication platform to improve health literacy in Cameroon. We particularly help to improve the health outcomes of vulnerable and disadvantaged people. It is a sad injustice that health myths are more easily believed by those with lower financial and educational attainment. So far, we have reached about 27,000 people on social media and over 30,000 via radio and television. Our MT Jam Health communications have four characteristics, the four C's. First, they are correct and complete. This means they are rooted in evidence but they are also communicated in a way that does not undermine previous knowledge or ancient practices. I once saw a patient who believed that typhoid fever can only be managed with a mixture of Guinness beer, cola nuts, and whiskey. By taking this supposed cure, he damaged his kidneys and could not afford dialysis to fix it. This inspired me to develop hashtag Myth Mondays to debunk medical myths. We also provide information about health services and specialists that are available in Cameroon to improve accessibility. It is nearly impossible to access a treatment you don't know exists. Secondly, they are comprehensible. By avoiding medical jargon and using language that is straightforward with local examples and stories. This is because most of the health information online is written for an audience with a high literacy level and often for a white Western audience. Medical information is usually considered boring. And with e online information overload, adding some comedy attracts and retains an audience that is health savvy. I have even used dance on my Instagram reels to make people watch and implement. <laughs> Thirdly, they are culturally sensitive. By acknowledging and understanding the factors that drive people's beliefs, actions, and experiences. For instance, 
How do you increase skilled deliveries in a community that believes seeking medical assistance at birth is a sign of weakness? We realize this myth was spread by older women who had their children when there was no access to skilled midwives. Hence, our health education efforts were directed at these older women who eventually helped us to educate other younger women. Fourthly, they are community-based to include those who are not online. We meet people in their homes which is more convenient and because face to face, they are more open to new information. We are currently battling vaccine hesitancy because government health messages around COVID-19 were distant and distrusted. Youth who make up a great part of the global population and are targeted for most health interventions should be included in decision making. Our motto is nothing for us without us. To conclude, and in the spirit of spreading this health gospel, I urge you, my fellow change makers, invest in your well-being. Don't say, I will rest when I am old and dead. Those in sick beds have only one wish, to be well again. Only those who are healthy and well can go out and change the world. Take care of yourself first. Thank you. Yeah.